All right, we're doing block nine of Illusion Sampler. And this one, since block eight was, I don't wanna say difficult, time consuming. Since block eight was time consuming, block nine is super easy, so yay. Um, all right, the units that we're making look like this, and it looks like that that is one big triangle, but it's not. It's actually a square, with two half square triangles on either side of it that then makes that triangle unit or triangle looking unit. Um, so we're making a bunch of half square triangles and it, you're making some of each of the colors. Um, this is fabric five, you're making several, um, you're making more of fabric five than anything else. Let's put it that way. Um, you're starting with three inch squares and you're doing half square triangles like we did previously. You'll, you'll trim them down or square them up to two and a half inches. Then you're going to put them in rows and you start with a square of the um, fabric five and then you'll add another square, a half square triangle that has fabric five in it and then another half square triangle of your choosing. Then row two, and again, watch the orientation in the picture on your, in your pattern. Okay, row two starts with a half square triangle that's fabric five again, because you know you want those three units to be together, and then two more of your choosing. And then the third row starts with two half square triangles and ends with a square. All right, they have you press towards the square, um, the other direction and then away from the square in this one. So then you sew all three rows together and of course you end up with this unit then that looks like this. Now the um, block itself then is just a big four patch but you have to pay attention to the orientation and the orientation is you know you start with this here and then the next one is up and then this one is going to go um, the other way because you you're end up making a pinwheel here in the middle um, when it's all done. So uh, let me sew this last section together, sew it all together. I'll come back and show you the finished block. All right, here's the finished square. Now, one thing I would tell you is that when you're laying out your individual blocks, um, try and make sure that, you know, you don't have um, colors right next to each other, like especially here in this center pinwheel. Um, try and have different colors um, at each spot. Um, but anyhow, this is it finished. Now, it doesn't tell you to pinwheel the center, but I did because you have so many seams coming together right there. Um, and so if you're not familiar with that, here would have been my original seams, you know, that are opposite each other, nesting, and then this, the last seam that I sewed, I took out a couple of stitches here, do not go past this crosswise stitching. And then on this side, I took out a couple of stitches there too. I don't, I don't remove the threads, I leave the threads there. Um, but then that allows that seam to open up and one side gets pressed one way and the other half presses the other way and then the center kind of mimics what's on top. And then your seams are going in a circle with each other. Um, all right, so that finishes this block. Now our accent strips are equally easy this time. Yay. We're making these little units that have a background in the uh, little background window, if you will. And it consists of a little one and a half inch square of your background, a one and a half inch square of your color, and then a little one and a half by, I think it's two and a half inch rectangle. And you sew all three of those into a strip, press it away from the background. And then you will sew, and again, watch your picture in your pattern and make sure you orient it right. But you're gonna put a narrow strip on the top and a wider strip on the bottom. 
and you'll sew those and you'll press them away from the center and then this unit total should measure four and a half inches and you're going to make um, four or five of those let me see how many am i making one two three four five of those so um i'm going to finish the this strip and then i'll come back and show you the next accent strip all right, I have the first accent strip done. I had five blocks, I just couldn't count while I was on camera, I guess. Um, so the only thing about these is they have you change the direction. So just watch your, um, watch your picture and your pattern because they want the, the little squares to kind of be um, not, they, they don't want them to be in a straight line, I guess I should say. And by turning them, then you don't have to match any seams either. They just, they just turn. So, um, okay. So this, this accent strip then is done. And our next accent strip is flying geese, which we have done before also. And once again, it is the flippy corner flying geese. And, um, we have done that before. We're using our darkest of the backgrounds. I think it's background four. And then multiple multiples of some of your colors of um, fabrics one through nine. But as we've done before, we draw a diagonal line on the back. Again, we're gonna sew just right on the outside edge of that line, flip it back to make sure that the edges all match up, then trim it off and then do the other side. So they end up like that. All right, let me sew. I've gotten all the others sewn together. I just have this one to add on. Um, they have you press everything the same direction on those. So let me finish this last goose, add it onto this strip, and then I'll put the whole block together and show it to you when it's done. So here's our finished block block nine. Now, as I was sewing it together, I did flip one of the seams on my flying geese. It was the second one from the end, and then that made everything nest. Now, I know they made some corrections to the pattern after um, the, store, the store patterns came out, so yours may be different, you know, may have already said that, but if it didn't, go ahead and do that. It makes it easier. So anyhow, we'll be back for block 10.